This InDesign tutorial will demonstrate the Type Tool, Line Tool, use of the Character Panel, Align Features, Smart Guides, and a feature called Create Outlines, which functions in the same way as it does in Adobe Illustrator. It's how we turn type characters into shapes that we can modify. Let's get started with a new file and choose the Print tab to find the letter preset, which is for a standard 8.5 by 11 inch document. I'll change the units to inches, the standard measurement used in the United States. Let's change the margins to be 2 inches. If you are new to the software, you will soon see that margins are simply suggestions. I use them as a guide to place all of my design elements within this area. Before we get started, let me point out that I am using the Typography Workspace. I will begin with the Type tool, which I sometimes refer to as the Text tool. Before we type, I will choose my font ahead of time, that being Impact. Now I will draw a text box. I think of it as a bounding box, like a frame. I'll type Text. Then I will draw another text box and type Lines. Use the selection tool to move the boxes around. Let's select both boxes so that we can quickly change the letters to uppercase. We can do that by going to the type dropdown, choosing change case, and then uppercase. Next, let's open the character palette. To make my text bigger, I can either click on these arrows or type in a number. While both of my text boxes are still selected, I will change this to a 94 font size and press enter. You may be wondering what happened to our text, lines. Well, it still exists. It's just that we made it bigger than our bounding box. That is what the red box with a plus sign is indicating. All we need to do is drag a corner out until our text reappears. Adjusting the size of our bounding boxes does not change the size of our text. It is helpful to think of the text and the bounding box as two different entities. Now let's increase the tracking, which is located here in the character panel. I will increase it to 20, which will make my text just a bit wider. This is a way of horizontally stretching the text without distorting the letters in of themselves. We are just increasing the space in between. Deselect the boxes so that we can go back and select just the top box. Let's move the top box closer to the bottom box, and I will nudge it to the left margin with my keyboard arrow keys. Now I will start playing with the position of the bottom box to see what looks appealing. I'll try to line up this I under the T. I don't like seeing all of my bounding boxes at once, so I will switch to the overprint preview mode now because I find it less distracting. Now let's select the top bounding box we are going to change the word text into shapes that we can modify. We do this by going to the Type drop-down and selecting Create Outlines. You won't see much difference until you move down to the Direct Selection tool. Now we can see all of these anchor points. They are filled with blue, which means all anchor points are currently selected. So I will deselect them by clicking somewhere outside of my bounding box. You will see the blue boxes are now filled with white, which indicates they are deselected. Now I will go back in and select these two specific anchor points. They have turned blue, indicating they are selected. I'll pull down on one of these anchors to elongate my T. To keep it perfectly vertical, I can press the shift key while I am doing this. Let's zoom out. I want the T to connect to the I seamlessly but I can see they are just a tiny bit out of alignment. One way to solve this problem is to turn my lines text into shapes as well, so that I can remove the eye. So go to Type and Create Outlines. I can see that my anchor points are white, all currently deselected. Since my eye is overlapping with the T, I need to hold down my Shift key to select the eye anchor points individually. The Delete keyboard key will remove it now. Now I can go back to the T and pull it all the way down. Remember to select both of these anchor points to do this. I will zoom in and adjust it again to line it up better. Now let's draw a new text box. Type the word AND. I'll go back to my selection tool so that I can move it. When we forget to get off of the type tool, it thinks we want to keep making new text boxes. Okay, time for something new. Let's create some lines with the Line tool. Take a look at the Line tool properties first. 
the line tool ignores the fill color and uses the stroke color. So I need to change the stroke color setting from none to black. It automatically gave me a one point thickness to my line. I'll increase the thickness to three. Click and drag to draw a line, holding down the shift key to keep it horizontal. Use the selection tool to move the line. I'll pull on these handles to extend. Now let's copy and paste this line two times. It may paste directly on top, so you won't see it until you move it again. Position them like this, kind of messy. Let's use the align feature to make this orderly. Select all three lines and take a look at the properties panel. If you cannot see it, you can go get it from the window dropdown. Within the align section, I will click on align left edges. Now to make these spaces the same between the lines, I can use the distribute vertical space tool. While they are all selected, maybe I will extend the right side of the lines. Then to save time, I will copy and paste these three lines together and move them to the other side. As long as your smart guides are turned on, they are super helpful in lining up design elements. They just kind of snap in place. I will then extend my lines to the edge of the S. Move the AND text box down and then select and move the left sides of the bottom two lines. Now I can see that I want my AND to be bigger. So I'll increase it to 22 and expand the bounding box so that we can still see it. Now I will adjust the bottom two lines just a bit more. I think it's looking good, but the T feels a bit heavy. So I will do one more thing to ease that imbalance. I will select all three lines again and copy paste. Let's move them down here for a moment. First, I will bring the lines in to about this width. Then I will change the color to white or paper. Now let's move these new lines, tricky to select when they blend into the background and place them on top of the T in alignment with the other lines. Again, easy to do with the smart guides turned on. I need to increase the width just a tiny bit and nudge to the left. Now I'll zoom out. I like how this arrangement creates some tension and how the proximity of the lines to the letters evokes the gestalt principles of continuity and closure. The common InDesign export file type is PDF, but for this project, we will export it to a high quality PNG file. Be sure to select 300 points per inch resolution. 